The Arizona State School for the Deaf and Blind hosts seven different sports amongst the high school and middle school level. Cronkite News reporter Talia Massey went to Tucson and profiles their competitive basketball team. Here in this gym, all you'll hear is the sound of a dribbling basketball. For players and coaches, this is all they hear. That's because this gym belongs to the Arizona State School for the Deaf and Blind, and basketball is one of their most popular sports. In basketball, I like the different aspects of it. There is a lot that goes into playing basketball. There is defense and offense. You have to know specific moves to go past your defense. For players like Dalton Green, their ability to play a sport like basketball comes from a reliance on their other senses. I'm very reliant on sight, and mainly that's it, and touch. Still, communication for these players can be a challenge. Coach Gerald Brown, who is deaf, understands the struggle as he played basketball as a high school student in Chicago and also went on to play college ball. I was the only deaf individual on a hearing basketball team growing up. I wanted to become a coach because I really like to give myself a challenge. I like to challenge other schools because these students can play at such a high level. I also have a passion in sports and developing youth to become successful like myself. While the players and coaches here know American Sign Language, or ASL, eye contact is an important part of the game. It's pretty cool because when you'll see the point guard coming up the floor and like, all eyes will be on that point guard. Communication between that point guard and the head coach is really important. They're always looking at each other. It's really neat to see that. I think we communicate a lot and we have a lot of secret terms and coach always instills in us the importance of teamwork and how we need to communicate. When playing teams with hearing players, ASDB's communication strategy is like a secret language. We have our own signs for the plays and for the other team that they don't know. It's like, what are they doing? What play are they doing? But it doesn't always work smoothly. If someone is behind me, I can't hear them, and they could steal the ball. We can't hear what they are calling out for plays or if they are calling other players to come defend you. One of the biggest challenges they face is communicating with the referees. If the referees do not know ASL, there's a communication barrier, even with an interpreter. They're not able to communicate with the refs, like, hey, watch for Holden, watch for certain things that we do in a hearing game, where the kids are like, hey, 23 is Holden, ref, keep an eye on that. Little things like that, that the deaf kids aren't able to do. The skills these players learn through sport translates to all areas of their life. Usually, there is a stigma in society that they are the last kid to be picked. And as they grow up, they are not given enough opportunity to develop their skill set. So when we have a deaf or blind or visually impaired student that comes into our school later on in life, they don't have a foundation, so we want to build that here. Honestly, I love playing sports because it's a fun thing to do. It gives you more of a purpose in life. But that's not all of my purpose in life. I have other things that I can do. I just really enjoy being on a team. At ASDB, these athletes know that they can compete at the same level as any school, which is why to them, the sound of silence in this gym is never a disadvantage.